today's episode of Huber Syndrome, it's more Resident Evil hype. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. The Resident Evil 25th anniversary is just days away now. Last week we had Brit from What Good Games. Next week we're going to talk to the rest of the allies, talking about what makes this series so special to them. But for now, it's just me and you and a couple of my favorite moments from the best series in the world. Let's go. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris. First up, starting out strong, starting out at the peak, top three video game moments of all time. The first zombie. The very first zombie in Resident Evil, you know the one in the original and the remake. The slow munching of Kenneth's corpse only to slowly look behind at its next potential meal. Of course, there's numerous ways to handle this. If you're Chris, you can knife it. If you're Jill, you can shoot it. Or my main man, Barry Burton can clean up the mess. Look out, it's a monster! Let me take care of it. It's just such a menacing way to open this game. You've escaped from the Arclave Forest into the relative safety of this mansion, and uh, maybe you should have just stayed outside. This mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Next up in Resident Evil 2, Birkin's assassination attempt. Dr. Birkin, you'll come along with us quietly. You think I didn't know you were coming? This is my life's work. I'm not handing over anything. This is the moment that cemented my obsession with this franchise because this is peak umbrella conspiracy. Even the main villain of this game, William Birkin himself, umbrella faithful employee making the G-Virus, gets played by his own employers. And even though he is the villain and sketches hell, it adds this texture and this tragedy to him. You know, you as you're Claire, you're interacting with his daughter a bunch. So it adds kind of this, this tragic doctor becomes the monster element. And just the implications of this hit Hunk, UBCS coming in to retrieve the virus. What are your motivations? Who hired you? What is going on? Of course, some of these answers would be filled in over the years, but there still is a mystery to Hunk. Will he ever reveal himself again? We will see. We're in, sir, but we had a snafu. Target resisted if we had to take him out. Next up, flash forwarding to Resident Evil 3. Four, and that doesn't mean I don't love Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica. Shout out to Steve, shout out to the Ashfords, shout out to Carlos realizing that Jill was telling the truth and punching the computer as hard as he can. Shout out. I got Jill knew all along. And she trusted me anyway. Fuck! But Resident Evil 4, that first village encounter. I said the word village. Resident Evil 4, of course, is a dramatic departure from fixed cameras and the original games. At first, the only similarity was that we were controlling Leon S. Kennedy from Resident Evil 2, from the Raccoon City destruction incident. And as hesitant I was, because all I wanted in life was to take down Umbrella myself, I wanted to be the one who pushed the button or pulled the trigger on Spencer, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. This first encounter is still my absolute favorite. Of course, they released this as a demo disc, and I must have played this thing 150 freaking times. And I think it's all because of the simple nature of it. It's early on in the game, we're not superhero Leon S. Kennedy, all we have is a pistol, a shotgun, and our wits. 
and just being able to barricade the windows, pushing over the ladders, jumping through the windows out of there, just this constant urgency to move, move, move. And then of course the Jason Voorhees nod, a burlap sack with a chainsaw. Instant decapitation if he gets too close. And lastly, Resident Evil 5, the culmination of the Wesker and Chris rivalry, the showdown. Of course, shout the hell out to maybe the best cutscene in Resident Evil history leading up to this fight. You know the one where Jill and Chris track Spencer down and get in a fight with Wesker after he takes out his own maker. But this fight is so freaking personal because it's not just Wesker we're fighting. It's a mind-controlled Jill Valentine. And you just can't get more personal than that. Just so many feelings going through my head at this time. Thinking about the Spencer mansion. Thinking about those origins of, of stars and Wesker and Chris and Jill and Barry. And now Wesker just being an evil bastard. How could he possibly hurt Chris the absolute most? Take someone he cares about and make him fight. It's just so upsetting and for all the crazy monsters we've seen over the years, this is the most horrifying. Having to fight Jill Valentine. And a quick shout out to my main man Brad Ellis who stayed up that night. The night Resident Evil 5 came out, we beat this thing in two sittings. Two, because we had to take a lunch break. I remember 1.30 in the morning fighting Wesker. And, and I almost forgot, this is the first time we ever got to fight Wesker. Ever. We've seen cutscenes. You know, we see the tyrant take him out in Remake 1. We see his battle with Alexia and Chris in Code Veronica. But this was the first real-time fight versus one of the most legendary villains in video game history. 10 out of 10. We last met at the Spencer Estate, wasn't it? And that's gonna do it for the episode. Those are just a few of my Resident Evil highlights over the years. If I didn't mention it, it doesn't mean it's not my favorite. I've got a million of them. But next week, we're gonna be joined by the Allies as they break down some of their favorite moments and uh, favorite elements of this franchise as the 25th anniversary rapidly approaches Let's see what is in store in just a few days. We are Easy Allies. Help us out on patreon.com slash easy allies. The only reason we're here is because of your generosity. Like and subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next week. Love and respect. Oh, la campana. Es hora de rezar.